Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Praise to the Trinitarian God. Yes. Praise to the God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. Amen. The Bible tells us, in the beginning, when God created man and woman, man and woman sin against God. Bible gives us the solution for the sin of mankind. Because sin separated man and woman from God. Sin break the relationship between man and woman towards God and towards one another. Yet, God of Bible gives us the solution. Yes. The solution is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Who is going to come and die on the cross so that man and woman can be stand in front of the Holy God once again. And scripture tells us, approximately 2,000 years ago, Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal Lord of God, yes. Alpha and Omega, mm. King of Kings, Lord of Lords, mm. stepped into this world and died on the cross for the sin of mankind. Today, we rejoice because Lord Jesus Christ made us, made us right with Holy God. Amen. Praise to Him. Today, as we, as we acknowledge for men and women to stand in front of Holy God, they need to repent and see what Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross. And when we look at the scripture, we see it's Jesus Christ not only died on the cross for our sins, but he is also the perfect example for mankind. Mercy to the world. Amen. On the other hand, we've got approximately 1.84 billion Muslims today. Yeah. They are following men called Muhammad, mm. whom they identify as their prophet. And they tell us Muhammad was perfect example for mankind. They tell us Muhammad is the mercy to mankind. Today, we want to see Muhammad, last prophet of Islam, is he the spokesperson for merciful of merciful of Allah, or is he just acting out of um, what is the phrase for that? Not merciful. What is the opposite of not hatred. merciful? Hatred. Hatred. So we want to look at the life of Muhammad, and we want to see can Muhammad be the example to mankind? The way he with other people. Yeah, so we're asking today that we have Muslims. Are you a Muslim? Do you think Muhammad is a mercy to mankind? Yeah? According to Islam, you think that, yeah? So we're going to analyze from Islamic scriptures if Muhammad is a mercy to mankind. We're only going to use Islamic scripture, nothing else, yeah? And then you will see and judge for yourself if he is a mercy to mankind. Shall we start, yeah? All right. Would you, would, you think, would you think Muhammad has perfect and sinless content? Are you guys Muslims? Can you help him out? Is Muhammad a sinner or not? Sorry? Okay, so, so you, don't think you don't want to answer the question. Okay. You don't think that's a good question to ask audience if Muhammad was sinner or not. Let, let, let I me want tell to you. follow someone yeah. who is perfect and not sinless. 1.84 billion Muslims are following Muhammad and I want to look at the actions of Muhammad yeah. to see if he was perfect or not. Yeah. Because you're following Muhammad and you're saying this is not a relevant question. Do you understand why it's relevant? Do you understand why? Because you're following Muhammad and you're saying he's perfect. Okay, so we're asking you, is he a sinner? Yes or no? So you said he's perfect. That means he's not a sinner. If someone is perfect, there's no sin in them. But you said he's perfect. If, if I'm perfect and I sin. No, you can't be perfect and you sin. <laughs> they contradict one another. What is the definition of the perfect part, sir? Perfection. Yeah. You sin. That's not, that's not an imperfection. 
perfection. If I do sin, yeah, and, I, and I can ask for forgiveness, and I can reconcile that I made a mistake. However, that's not really the issue. I wanted to ask you. So that's, that's perfection. So perfection is making a mistake and then saying you made a mistake. That's perfection. No, that's not a question here. No, that's not a question here. We, we can answer that question after we finish this. Let us analyze Muhammad first. Well, we're here to analyze him. Okay, we'll, we'll deal with your question after this. We'll answer that question after this. Can we go on? Yeah? So, according to the Quran, Muhammad was sinner. Sinner, yes. So, Muslims here today tell us he was perfect. Yeah. Allah disagrees with Muslims. Allah asks Muhammad that we can he answer that way. Ask forgiveness for his past sins and for his future, future sins. sins. Muhammad was man of sin. And one of the sin Muhammad did. So, brother, can you first read the verse for us? Can you read the verse for 40, us? 4055? Uh, yeah, the ones. Yeah. There's so many. 4055, yeah? Okay. Surah 4. 48, okay. Surah 48, verses 1 to 2. Surah 48, ayah 1 to 2. I think it's uh, after Surah Muhammad. I know, I know, we don't know the name. Surah 48. Do you know 47? Surah, Surah 47 is Muhammad. After, after Muhammad. We don't know it, but after Muhammad. al Do you know al fat al fat al fat ayah 1 to 2. Here is what it says. No. We have given you, O Muhammad, a signal victory that Allah may forgive you your sin that is which is past and that is which is to come and may perfect your words, his favor unto you and may he guide you into a right path. No, no, that's what he says, perfect. No, you said he's perfect. I didn't say that he didn't sin, you said. No, 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 I didn't. Hey, hey. Did you say he was perfect or not? So, <laughs> Brother, your camera, don't lie. We don't need to play semantics. So, Quran identifies Muhammad as a, as a sinner, not only as a sinner who sinned in the past. After Allah confronted him, he continued to sin. And his future sins. Your past sins and your future sins. Ask a question based on this. I will, we will answer that when we come down. Let's deal with Muhammad first. Why are you so afraid of talking about Muhammad and his sin, sir? Because I do not know enough. That's okay, you are let's educate you. And you don't let's even educate know about you. Your prophet. But we're going to read your sources. No, no, no. If we're lying, go and read your sources. I don't trust your tafsir. Exactly. You don't, you don't need to. No, we're not giving you tafsir. We're reading the Quran. No, no, no. That's your interpretation. I've seen, I've seen your. I didn't interpret the Quran. I've seen you lie a lot. So I can't trust oh. you. Okay. So, so you just accused us lying. It looks like my brother it doesn't look like Allah, or my brother doesn't look like Muhammad. I don't know. I don't know how Allah looks like. Muhammad is a liar, not my brother, sir. So, we're not going to answer that until we finish this. Can we do that after this? Look at. Now we saw Allah told Muhammad that he need to rip, he need to ask, for ask forgiveness for his past, past and for his future, future sins. sins. And now let's look at the Surah 47, verse 19. Again, Surah 47. This is Surah Muhammad, yeah. When Ayah 19. Allah confronts Muhammad for the sins he's done. Can okay. you read that? Okay. This is what it says. So no, O Muhammad that there is no God except Allah and ask forgiveness for your sin and for the believing men and believing women Allah knows your place of turmoil and your place of rest so here Muhammad is being put into the same pedestal as the believing men and believing women because he's a sinner and believing men and believing women are sinners so Muhammad is a sinner according to Islam while Islam teaches us Muhammad is sinner, still Quran stands and then tells us this Muhammad is the mercy to the world. Exactly. So, and since Allah is all merciful, they want to see Muhammad's mercy in action. How did Muhammad express that he was mercy 
to the world. We know in his life, Muhammad engaged with the people of the book and also people from the different tribes. Now, let's see. How did Muhammad express the mercy Before we the go people there. of the book who are identified okay. as Jews? Let's read, let's read that he asked forgiveness from the hadith 100 times a day. And That's then, pretty much sinner. Yeah. So we're, get, we're going to... Uh, 24 divided 100 a lot of times. I don't know. You're good at maths, not me. We're going to see, we're going to confirm from the hadith, not just the Quran, that Muhammad is a sinner. So we told you earlier on, we're just going to read Islamic literature, nothing else. So this is... Um, where should I go? Sahih al-Bukhari, yeah? 875-319. Narrated Abu Huraira. I heard Allah's apostle say, by Allah, I ask for forgiveness from Allah and turn to him in repentance more than 70 times a day. That is your prophet asking forgiveness to Allah more than 70 times a day. That is showing that Muhammad is a sinner and he so needs repentance. Every 20 minutes, Muhammad asks forgiveness for the She's sins. a mass genius, so yeah. So every 20 minutes. And it gets worse, of course. Sahih Muslim tells us Muhammad asks forgiveness for 100 times a day. 100. That's more. All of his life is spending between his wives plus asking forgiveness for his sins. But as we, as we saw, while Quran tells Muhammad is sinner, Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim tells us Muhammad is sinner. Let's see. Let's see. Remember, Muhammad is according to Surah 21. Mercy to the world. Yeah. Now, let's see. How did Muhammad express mercy? Okay? To the so, Jews, yeah? To the Jews and to the other people. So we're but reading the let's, tafsir. Here. Let's see. Let's see. What is the definition of the mercy? Okay. Anyone so, can help us, help us out? What is the definition any for Muslims, the mercy? Are you a Muslim, sir? Yeah. What is mercy? What's the definition of mercy? Islam. No, no, no. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want this to us, yeah. He's not going to do it. So what is the definition of the mercy Same in Islam? Like Jesus Christ. No. Yeah, but what is the definition of mercy? So, definition of the mercy in Islam is Lord Jesus Christ according to Muslim. Not Muslims. No, 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 no. Are you a Muslim? Now you're being stupid, aren't you? You're up there. I okay, now you're being stupid. Why don't you just... I ask you, you just talk. what is don't the definition of the mercy? I don't know. But what you I'm saying to you, don't make jokes. Anyone? Jokes. You have to say, we're not making jokes. Anyone knows? Okay. No, Brother, we're not. What is the definition of so the why didn't you say that? Why didn't you say that in the beginning? Tell us what she said, that's what I said. So move on. Tell us your definition. So you don't know as a Muslim? I don't know. Muslims don't even know what is the definition of the mercy. You said so. You said so. Okay, but that's why you're practicing Pakia. When when someone says I am Muslim, should I think that person is a Christian? Should I think that person is a Buddhist? You already identify yourself as a Muslim, sir. I am old enough We're all Christians. I am old enough to not play your game, sir. So, yeah, you're personal, isn't it? I'll say that to her, but for what she said earlier. All right, let's see, let's see if Muhammad was a mercy. We're going to read your scriptures. And we're not going to ask you, we're going to read your literature. We're not going to, we're not asking you. So, let's read. You said you were a Muslim. Wait, wait, wait. You said you were a Muslim. I did. You asked me, are you Muslim? And you said yes. Uh, what did you say then? Qualify if they are Muslim. Wait, wait, wait. That mean that leaf that is mine, does it? I'm not, I'm not talking about the leaflets. Do you represent all the Christians? I'm not talking about the leaflets. I'm not representing all Christians. I represent Jesus. Christian? Do you represent Muhammad? Are you Christian? Yes, I am. So you're representing all the Christians? No, I'm representing Jesus. I never said you're representing Muslims. You said you're Muslim. Sir, 
Your games don't work with us. Don't twist stuff. We're talking about Muhammad here. I never said your disbelief is yours. No. I said we're reading your literature. Let's carry on. Yeah. No, yours. Yeah. Sir, I am sure that you're more than 40 years old, but you're acting like a 10 year old. So please, please. Uh, let's read what it says. In uh, Tafsir ibn Abbas, the first cousin of Muhammad, it doesn't matter if you don't know. There are Muslims that I uh, know what I'm talking about. So, Surah, Surah 47 19 told us Muhammad needed to ask forgiveness for his sin. We'll see why. When we look at the Tafsir, let's see what Muhammad did. Therefore, he is asking forgiveness. Yeah. Okay? And Brother, we're reading, we're reading Tafsir ibn Abbas. The first cousin of Muhammad, so you can't dispute with this stuff here. Listen, oh Muhammad, yeah? There is no God except Allah. There is none that harms or benefits, gives or withholds, raises except Allah. Yeah? I ask forgiveness for your sin, oh Muhammad, when he beat up Zayd ibn Salamin, the Jew. Okay, so let me break it down. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, you gotta break Brother, it. I'm gonna break, break it down. down. Break it down. Break so, it down. Break it. Muhammad is supposed to be the mercy to the world. Mm. Because Allah is so merciful, Muhammad becomes a spokesperson for Allah. Yeah. How Muhammad engages with Jew by beating him. Is that merciful action, sir? Oh, you need a reason to justify why Muhammad did it. Why do you need a reason? He's beating human beings. Punishment, as you know, no, no. What was the reason for that? He didn't believe in Allah. Doesn't matter. I'm asking you. No, I'm giving you the reason. The Jew does not believe in Allah. That's the only reason. Yeah. I thought you say that, brother. It no, 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 but he doesn't believe in Allah. He doesn't. That's the only reason? Yeah. What is Tafsir ibn Abbas. Tafsir ibn Abbas. Does that. Does he. All the Muslims believe in that? No, he's the first cousin of Muhammad. He says that all the Muslims believe in that. It is, it is authentic, yeah. So let, let us believe in that. Are you talking about Shia or Sunni? Okay, he doesn't know okay. that's going to pass. Okay, let's know. move on. So, according to, according to Surah 47, verse 19, Tafsin tells us Muhammad beat a Jew man. Therefore, he needs to ask forgiveness. Muhammad is supposed to be the mercy to the world. Muhammad is supposed to be the spokesperson for mercy for Allah. Mercy, uh, let's mercy see. for Allah. Why Muhammad is beating Jew? Can you answer the question? No, it doesn't say that in here. It doesn't say that in here. No, I didn't make it up. Listen. Brother. No, I didn't. He committed a crime and he was punished for it. Maybe. Why Muhammad? Is the judge Let's see. Let's see if you're consistent. Muhammad is the prophet of Islam. How can the prophet of Islam become a judge for the people of the world? Let's see if you're consistent. Why the Quran says they did the judge what is in their hands. Muhammad breaks the law by not only judging according to you, to the Jew, but Muhammad also beating this Jew guy. Listen, Muhammad now, let's look Muslims, at Muslims, Christians, Jews, Jews, and he was the same as well. Depends on your actions. Okay, That's what he gets. let's see if you're consistent. Let's, let's see if you're see. consistent. Let's see how Muhammad We're gonna read more. Is a Jew. Why? He's a Jew. Tell us. Tell us. You tell us. You tell us. You are the one who you're saying that. You have to explain it. And I, and I said to you because he doesn't believe in Allah. It doesn't matter. Because Muslims, doesn't matter. Christians, and Jews live 
majority of them who did not fight against Prophet Muhammad lived in peace. Who? Let them respond to that. Can we read? Can we read your literature on that? Yeah, let them respond to that. Muslim tells us Christians, Muslims, and Jews live together happily. But let's see. Let's see if Muhammad lived with the Jew tribe happily after. Banu Kureza, six hundred twenty-seven. Brother, what happened? What happened to the Jew tribe called Banu Kureisha in 627? You told us they lived happily after. Ah, the Jews, the Jews in Medina, yes? Is that not the case? No, he's talking about the Medina, the Jews in Medina, right? So, yes? Yes. The Jews in the Medina, what happened? All the Jews, the Prophet Muhammad, yes, he lived in peace with Muslims, Christians, and Jews. Don't deceive. Don't deceive. Listen, you say something. Can you I prove finish. it? Can you prove it? Yeah. He said, everybody is peace. Every one of you. Yeah. You have to live, abide by the law of the land. We are living together. We are the majority. You have to respect our laws. We respect your laws. We live in peace. But any one of you who goes against us and they like deliberate with the enemies will be punished. Shall we read it? Let's read it. Let's read it. So, Let's read it. Because you're lying. You're lying. You are lying. We're not a dictator. We're not a dictator. You are lying. Hear what happened. When Muhammad moved to Medina, Muhammad was a minority. Let me finish what I'm saying. Can you show us? Can you show us? Can you show us? Sahel Bukhari, you read it, you read it. Shall I read this one? Yeah. yeah. Then they surrendered and the apostle confined them in Medina in the quarter of D al Harith, a woman of B Najah. Then the apostle went to the market of Medina and dug trenches in it. Thank you very much. That's a big then you are liars. Medina. And dug trenches in it. Why did he dig the trenches? This is why. Then he sent for them and struck off their heads in those trenches as they were brought out to him in batches. Among them was the enemy of Allah. Okay, I'll repeat it. Then he sent for them and struck off their heads in those trenches as they were brought out to him in batches. These are the Jews. And how many of them? 600 up to 900 Jews. And this guy is telling us Muhammad is a peaceful mercy to mankind. This is what your literature says. Now he's gone, okay. So, while Muhammad is engaging with people, while Muhammad is engaging with people of the book, he goes and gets rid of 600 to 900 people. But it's not only Muhammad goes out and order, um, order killing of them, he, what, is he doing that mercifully or is he torturing them? He's brother? torturing them. Read the part. It says, this one? By God, do not blame. The, the part? Yeah, yeah. This one. No, 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 start, start from here. Which he made. Okay, watch this. This, is, this went on, the apostle made on them. Huai was brought out wearing a flowed robe in which he made holes about the size of a fingertips in every part so that it should not be taken from him as a spoil with his hands and to his neck by his rope. When he saw the apostle, he said, by God, I do not blame myself for opposing you. I'm giving you the reason, listen, for opposing you, but he who forsakes God will be forsaken. Then he went to the men and said, God's command is right. A book and a decree and massacred have been written against the sons of Israel. Then he sent 
stepped out and his head was struck off. Why? Because he opposed him. Not because he was fighting him. That's the mercy to mankind. That's Muhammad. It doesn't look like he was merciful. The message of merciful of our mercy of Allah. Yet, yet, in Zamha, when it comes to the practice, it yeah. Muhammad fails to be merciful to mankind. Not yet merciful Quran at all. Says, yet Quran says Muhammad was sent to be the mercy to mankind. Does that sound like merciful to you? It that, is, that is Ibn Isham, page 461 to 465, 464. That's it, the life of Muhammad. It gets worse. It gets worse. Yeah, it remember, does. remember, Islamic tradition tells us Muhammad was a sinner. Muslim tells us Muhammad was perfect. Islamic tradition tells Islam tells us Muhammad is the model for mankind. And he is the spokesman for the merciful Allah. Mm. We already saw how Muhammad treated and with the jihad. We saw how Muhammad killed genocide approximately 900 men. Now, let's see how Muhammad engaged with people who killed the shepherds. Bukhari, Bukhari, which one should I read? All of them are Bukhari, so read the first one. Oh okay, yeah, we'll read the first one. Sahih al-Bukhari, volume 1, book 234. Viewers, narrated Abu Kilaba, Anna said some people of Ukal or Urania tribe came to Medina and its climate did not suit them. So the Prophet ordered them to be the herd camels and do not drink their milk and urine. So they went as directed and after they became healthy they killed the shepherd of the prophet and drove away all the camels i don't know if this really happened but anyways the news reached the prophet early in the morning and he sent men in their pursuit and they were captured and brought at noon he then ordered to cut their hands and feet and their eyes were branded with heat heated pieces of iron this is torture to the max then they were brought they were put in al-hara and when they asked for water no water was given to them and it finishes by saying those people committed theft and murder became infidels after embracing islam and fought against allah and his apostle allah not is merciful rahman and rahim allah is merciful and gracious and muhammad brings the message yeah you're right with the sword yeah Allah. as muhammad brings this message he engages with people who kill the shepherds before he advised that on drinking the camel urine and camel milk which must very good it has very good health reasons don't I don't think so. Guys. Don't it drink is, it. It is bad. Don't drink it. But Muhammad tells people to do it. People does it. And those people who Muhammad looked after and healed with the camel urine kills the shepherd. What does Muhammad do? He cuts their hand off and their feet and he puts heated, heated iron sorry, on their eyes. He cuts hands off and feet off. Yep. That's very merciful. Yeah, very merciful. What do you think, Muslims? Is that merciful or not? He doesn't stop that. He puts hot iron into their eyes. That's very merciful action of Muhammad. So they can't walk, they don't have hands, and they can't see. They're blind. That's not enough. Of course that's not enough. That's exactly. That's not enough. Muhammad puts them in Me Muhammad puts them in Medina. This time of the year Medina is around 34 degrees. No it's water. very hot country. Yeah. Okay? Without water. They and, ask for water. And Muhammad makes them to die. Yeah. Not from cutting their hands and feet or putting hot iron in 
their eyes from Pars. And that is the Muhammad who is sent to be the mercy to the world. That is the Muhammad who brings the message of merciful of our merciful Allah. That is the Muhammad who Muslim tells us he is the model for us. Yeah. That's not very good model at all. No way. Brother? No way. He no way. Why would I torture people? Jesus I'm told sorry, us to I'm love sorry. our enemies. Brother, sorry, I need to phrase my question again. Okay. Would you chop the hands of people? No. Would you chop people, not chop people's hands, but cut off their feet? No. Would you put hot iron in the eyes of no, people? No, no, never. And you are just a human being. You are not the last messenger. You so, are not the mercy to the world, yet you wouldn't do it. So I'm but, better than Muhammad? But man who's supposed to be the merciful to the world, man who's supposed to be the sinless, yeah. practice something, you think it is wrong? It is wrong, very wrong, because this is going against the morality of humans. And what bogus me is when we read the these scriptures, of the dignity of humans, when we read these scriptures, which is from Sahih al-Bukhari and the Quran and the Hadith, I mean, they call us hate preachers. Why don't you call your own prophet a hate preacher? It's not us. We're reading what it says. So Muslims, open your eyes, your spiritual eyes, not just your physical eyes, and see for yourself that Muhammad was a sinner and he was never a mercy to mankind. And There's only one person who's a mercy to mankind. And his name is Yeshua. Jesus Christ, the Savior, who is, who came on earth because he loved us. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, not hated, not to torture the men and the women. He loved us, so he came on earth, humbled himself to die on the cross and resurrect for your sin and my sin. That's the only way we can be saved. Muhammad is dead, buried and gone. We know his grave in Mecca, gone, finished. Jesus is alive, resurrected forever and ever. Come to him so you can have mercy for your soul. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, brother.